It is Tuesday the 3rd of September. I'm your host Ryan Kier and this is the Quantium Cast. Okay, so having a brief look at some of today's focus stocks, we have Rose Petroleum, Coves PLC, Restaurant Group PLC, and Argo Blockchain, a quite popular one that we have had quite a few times on our Quantium Cast. As you can already tell by my voice, I am absolutely shattered. I just slept really late last night, was working on a project, but that's not what's important. What's important is what is going on with Rose Petroleum PLC. This company has just released an RNS to show that they've had directorate changes, but also a board restructuring, meaning that the CEO, the very unpopular CEO, in fact, Matthew Idians, Mr. Let's get a placing at a lower price. Let's not actually uh, deliver shareholder value, but more so just keep our pockets full of placing cash. Well, he's been chucked out or he's mentioned that he's stepped down, but I believe that he wasn't popular amongst the major shareholders as well. And the man who had taken over is by the name of Gordon Stein. This guy has decent experience, especially in aim quoted companies, such as Madagascar Oil Limited. You probably wouldn't have heard of that. You've heard of Cadigan if you've been listening to our previous episodes, Cadigan Petroleum PLC, and Regal Petroleum PLC, which is quite a popular one on the Twitter investing community as well. And this guy, he is a chartered financial accountant decent bit of experience nevertheless Um, what we can see from this or at least try and infer is that the CEO the new CEO will now look to hopefully deliver shareholder value in fact he mentioned that in his statement but once again you can only see if they make a difference if they really really work hard to not bring placings and instead prefer financing deals but we'll have to see the company will soon be in that similar situation will need money so i wonder what the situation will be for them to raise money will they uh use dilutive financing or non-dilutive financing we'll have to see will it be equity financing will it be clns if it is dilutive we'll have to see well uh, if we look at the company shares though the 52 week highs that are around 3.9 3.9 pence per share showed that the shares have likely crashed but they do have 52 week lows of around 1 pence per share and that means they're 50% up from those but more than 50% down from the highs so the company is worth 2.65 million pounds you'd have not thought that that's an expensive company but obviously this is a loss making company so they're only going to depreciate in value until they start working on some of their assets. They had some decent assets at one point, US assets, I believe, but uh, nothing that really gives you a bit of a wow. (laughs) But if we look at some of the other directorate changes in Rose Petroleum, we can see that uh, Colin Harrington is another CEO actually. Forgive me for mentioning Rick Stein. I think Rick Stein, uh, Gordon Stein. I think he's actually another director. Sorry, he's a non-executive director. So the CEO, Colin Harrington, is somebody else. Hmm. They haven't. They've actually mentioned the background of Rick Stein or Gordon Stein. Guess me. I'm gonna gonna be saying the guy who makes food on TV. Oh my, I need to correct that, don't I? (laughs) Gordon Stein was a non-exec I was talking about. The company's CEO, they don't actually have much experience mentioned. That's a little bit worrying. Maybe a couple of directorates at the bottom. Madagascan Oil Group, that's for Mr. Stein. For Colin Harrington, we're seeing the company keep relatively quiet, so I assume 
there's a worrying side to that, but we'll have to see really. Okay, so moving on to Coos PLC. This company is a largely Indian based fashion firm. They have like a target market of around 18 to about 34 year olds. So younger peeps, but the company sells really, really discounted items of clothing. I can look at the news that they've mentioned and they've shown a deal or a partnership update with Future Group, which is called Future Lifestyle Fashions Limited. And they've mentioned that they want to develop an exclusive fashion range for Future Lifestyle Fashion Limited's brand factory. And they've mentioned that this contract is for about 0.15 million pounds and should be profitable after deducting the cost of goods sold and a 30% commission payable to FL, FL on the value of goods sold. They've also mentioned that there is another deal there that is expected to generate about £100,000 worth of additional revenue and as they've mentioned it will be profitable after the commission is taken off. There's nothing huge with that. Yes, it is a good contract that they're signing and it is good to see that the company trying to get as much sales volume as possible. But if you look back to the company's results in previous years, you can see that they've tried to shift as much volume as they could. And what happened? Well, they ended up losing more money than their revenue was because they were spending so much money on marketing. In fact, I did a little bit of research of my own a while back. I asked a sample of individuals who are involved within the Indian market. And the majority of people had actually heard of Coos and these were consumers. The only worrying issue is that Coos isn't making money and they are far from it at the moment. If they were making money, this would be a great value play ahead. In fact, the market cap stands at around 26 million. One of the largest investors is called Lord Aleem and this guy is one of the founders of the Times of India, a massive company. They put a couple million into this company but the issue is they raised money, right, or devoted some of their capital into coups via a CLN, a convertible loan note financing, basically death spiral financing. So if they really believed in the company why wouldn't they just put their capital at, say, a premium to boost up the share price and attract institutional investors? Well, I assume they weren't that confident, more so looking for a deal to just make a quick buck here and there and then dip. But they've, they've obviously remained as a shareholder. I just don't understand why you CLNs, convertible, any of that. As soon as I hear those words, I'm out. <laughs> but... Um, 52 week highs of Ku shares stand at 5.9 pence per share with 50, uh, sorry 52 week highs are at 12.1 pence per share 52 week lows are at 5.9 pence per share so 12.1 versus 5.9 the current price of shares ranges from around 6.3 pence per share to 6.5 so the shares are up about 10% from their 52 week lows but down almost 50% from their 52 week highs. So they had a valuation of about 24 million pounds previously, and they had also had valuation of around 50 million pounds before that. I think the 52 week high was achieved back in October, 2018. So almost a year back, but the 52 week low was achieved earlier on in August, towards the 14th of August, I believe. We have to follow this company a little bit further in a bit more detail to see whether they can yeah, profitability. I think it's Wahid Ali, not even Lord Alim, I think. I, I got the names mixed up. Wahid Ali is one of the guys from the Times of India and he held a position of something like executive chairman in the company at the time. And I believe his shareholding is quite large, but if you really care about the exact percentage, have a look on their website. It won't be that difficult to find. In fact, now we have a release of interim results from Restaurant Group. 
This company has released the interim results for the 26 weeks ended the 30th of June 2019. They mentioned that they're a diversified business, but uh, that really doesn't mean anything when your net debt goes all the way to £316.8 million from £24.2 million in 2018. Really scary stuff. They've mentioned that they've made an adjusted before profit, uh, sorry, a an adjusted profit before tax of 28.1 million pounds in comparison to 20.7 million pounds in 2018 but after a pre-tax charge of 115 million pounds and a couple of other issues the company mentions that they will make a statutory before tax a loss before tax of 87.7 million pounds in comparison to a statutory profit in 2018 of around 12.2 million pounds so this is worrying stuff already the company has mentioned that their cash flow doesn't really have an issue at the moment but the fact that their net debt has increased by much i can only assume that they have covered this loss by just borrowing more money and i don't understand why is the company paying a dividend they, they've got a interim dividend of around 2.1 pence per share they're trading at something like 154 pence per share. And they said this is in line with their policy. I assume this is why the company is doing so badly in the first place. But usually we see companies actually giving unsustainable dividends when they're actually struggling to maintain a profit. If we look at uh, their trading expectations, they mentioned that trading remains broadly in line with their full year expectations. So they haven't mentioned that it is on track, or they are on track to hit those targets, which is a little bit worrying. The wording could uh, scare a couple of us over here. They've also got Wagamama bond updates. Generally speaking, a lot of restaurant chains hold a lot of debt because leases, etc., And uh, they don't likely have the ability to pay these huge debts off in the future in fact restaurant group is as i mentioned a couple of minutes ago the owner of wagamama which is a popular restaurant for japanese cuisine they've also got a couple of pubs a couple of concession places they also own frankie and benny's i mean be local to the area of portsmouth pop through once i mean it doesn't matter if I enjoy the food at all. The numbers are <laughs> what matters. Looking into the company's accounts, I can see something like non-current assets spiking by around three, four hundred million pounds. That I don't exactly know the reason for. And I wonder myself why the cause is. Um, I can see their net assets have bumped all the way from 168 million in 2018 to something like 600 million I believe sorry 372 million but uh, that is down from the period ended December the 30th odd on uh, 2018 so I, I wonder why this is bumped up maybe they've used a couple of their borrowings to fund some acquisitions I can only assume that is the case because if I look into the company's non-current assets section I can find intangible assets popping up by around 500 million pounds so that usually is brand value and uh, we can only really see that as the reason why nevertheless if we have a quick look at the company's shares we'll see 52 week highs at around 222 spot 94 pence per share and 52 week lows at around 110 spot 10 pence per share so the company shares are down about 30 odd percent from highs and up almost for 50 percent we should say about 40 percent from lows and if i look at the market cap we can not really give them a p ratio in this case because they've actually made a loss um it would only be a negative situation that's really ugly for shareholders, especially when this company is worth £757 million. It scares me a bit. I know that this company has quite a decent net short position from institutional investors, and I assume that the decline in retail 
growth, or in fact, just the rest restaurant business in general, it is declining. I mean, Jamie's Italian came through. They didn't stay on the high street. Most of them are beginning to close. You have other companies like Pizza Express who actually behold a billion in debt. How do you pay off a billion in debt? It doesn't make sense. But <laughs> we'll, we'll just have to see with these guys if they can actually recover and somehow pull the cat out of the bag, as they say. If we look at the one month chart, we can see the shares are up quite a bit, about 20 pence per share, just over 10%. If we look at the six month chart, it made lows at around 110, as I mentioned, on the 8th of April. It's not that long ago, like five months odd. But they made their highs for the year of 122 at, I believe, the beginning of that 52 week period, 25th of September 2018. So basically, this time last year, they were doing well. At the moment, they've got a CEO, his name is Andy McHugh, and he's been there with them for three years, so ever since they shares have declined in fact we can look at 2016 ever since he joined the shares were about three pounds 89 per share and now they are one pound 54 so under his management they've declined by more than 50 percent worrying stuff and finally we've got a brief update from argo blockchain one that we have covered quite a bit over here and it shows that further to the announcement on the 13th of May 2019, the company Argo Blockchain announces that it has, by mutual agreement, ended discussions with concerning a proposal partnership and share swap with high blockchain technologies. So this actually isn't that great news. The company had put something out to the market a couple of shareholders were looking forward to. But with this company, as we mentioned before, the main driver isn't really a deal or couldn't be really a, a driver in the future because if we look at the company's cash generation they're taking in something like 1.5 million pounds odd a month at the current pricing of a cryptocurrency at around ten thousand dollars a bitcoin we could say but uh, they've got a margin of something like 80 percent which means that the company will be well profitable. The only issue is that they have to keep reinvesting in technology and that really shows why they could be struggling at the moment um, because they've mentioned that they've implemented an approximately 16 million dollar investment program. I haven't seen a number put on their investment program before but I had it at around 10 million pounds myself so say 12 million dollars so it's a little bit more that's a little bit worrying on my side, but um, they've mentioned that uh, Argo's board believes that the company has now established a strong platform with scale to deliver long-term growth organically, and that shareholders' interests would be best served by executing its current plans instead of pursuing a partnership. That's fair enough. So I assume that they couldn't get enough value out of it for themselves. And also, uh, one other thing I'd like to mention is that the further major increase in production capacity is also underway for 2020 and Argo said that they are doing this because they are looking to be the largest publicly quoted crypto miner globally. Oh, what a nice status there. The uh, largest crypto miner that is listed on the exchange. That actually doesn't sound that niche. It sounds, it sounds really grand to be honest. But um, anyways, let's have a look at the shares. The company's shares had been trading at around 9.4 pence per share. Uh, at, as of yesterday's close, Monday the 2nd of September, that is. Uh, if we look at five-day performance, they've been range-bound from nine, sorry, 8.5 pence per share to 10.5 pence per share. If I look at the one-year price performance, you've got 52-week lows at around 2.5. 8 pence per share and 52 week highs at around 11.63 they crashed all the way from 11.63 as bitcoin and many other cryptocurrencies had suffered a uh, retracement to something like three thousand dollars a bitcoin we could use as the uh, benchmark measure just for the sake of it the same way i guess we'd use an index as a benchmark measure for a normal stock right 
but uh, the shares have rallied all the way from about six pence per share to, as I mentioned, 9.4 pence the last close. That's a decent return for shareholders if they got in there because the prices had crashed from about 9.5 uh, on the date, the 8th of July and uh, th that crash kind of finished on the 31st of July. So there's a drop of about 33% and a rise of around 50% which equated to about the same price at the end. But just a huge headache for shareholders. The company's got a market cap of 27.68 million pounds. Yet uh, they are likely covering most of the costs of this funding program or expansion program as we could say. The funding program is probably just due to more production. They don't really need anyone involved. But it would be good for this company to actually place money and raise further funds for other expansion plans. Because at the moment they're probably only going to be able to cover unless they wait their uh, initial expansion plans. With in-house mining infrastructure, this company Argo Blockchain actually mentioned that they want to double it. Um, which is huge to around 505 pay to hash just know that that's quite a bit I mean I'm not a bull on Bitcoin by any means maybe because I saw it at around $300 and I guess I'm probably sour about it <laughs> but regardless of that <laughs> it's too volatile to keep my own funds in within my own discipline but um, for those who like a good bit of risk and want to have a decent risk reward play at hand, this is a company that could be looked into further. 27 million pounds of market cap, generating about 1.5 million a month in revenue. That's quite decent. And they're trying to bump this revenue as much as they can. And the margin is basically going to be the same. The only issue is every time they have to re, uh, should we say, maintain their infrastructure, you know, repair, do maintenance, whatever, then they have to likely put a huge investment that won't be recouped in the short run. But they mentioned actually, recently they put some money into a, a refurbishment, or some maintenance or whatever, they got some new tech, and it took about four months to give them money back. I remember crypto mining back in the days, and for me, it was like a 16 month time frame to recoup my money. And one thing that people have talked about quite a lot is you have to remember that these companies are doing it on a larger scale. So they benefit from economies of scale. That doesn't make sense in this situation. The only way they benefit from economies of scale is just cheaper energy prices because they could probably get decent deals. They use cooling systems like fans, etc. So we've got to note, they don't make money from getting a cheaper energy deal in the first place. I mean, anyone can do that. Um, and there is no guarantee on how much energy they'll use. But what they do get, likely I assume, they'll, they'll get benefits from reducing their costs from using efficient systems. So they could have a cooling system throughout a storage facility, I assume. I don't know if these guys are Canadian or, or something, but in one of their storage facilities, they will have a crap ton of, in fact, I believe they only have one, but in however many storage systems they have, they will have coolers, literally a crap ton of coolers throughout to try and maintain costs, but also make their processes in mining Bitcoin as efficient as possible. But anyways, that wraps up today's episode of the Quantium Cast. I'm extremely exhausted, no super malt, nothing. I'm just going to go back to sleep and uh, prepare for college beginning tomorrow. I can't even believe it. Got a couple of essays to write as well <laughs> and a couple of articles for this evening. But nevertheless, I thank you all for listening. I've been your host, Ryan Keir. Until next time.